Hey guys, this is Sarah, and I have not done a Facebook Live in forever, honestly, because it's been summer, and I've been like with my kids, with my hair a mess at the pool or whatever, and I have uh, not been internet presentable, but I hope you guys are doing great. I have loved your post and loved hearing your stories and sharing space with you, and I will get back to doing some of our dance parties. For those of you who are new to the group, uh, remember about who we are, and this group is about getting past your past, getting real about your present, and getting serious about your future. So I always get the question because people um, relationship, the first thing you think is, well, find a therapist or go to therapy. And um, so one of the biggest beliefs that I have is um, that therapy is not always the best way to fully heal after a toxic relationship. And I get a lot of questions about that. Um, typically from people who haven't been in therapy that long, because the people who have been in therapy for a while tend to know exactly what I'm talking about. So when you go to a therapist, um, it's kind of like going to like a general practitioner, okay? So they are dealing with, um, and I did go to a therapist. I still go to a therapist, but it's like a general practitioner. So she, you know, deals with people with addictions and deals with people with, um, you know, par like horrible parents or deals with, um, you know, self-worth and deals with this and deals with that. And um, my personal therapist is uh, deals with mainly with addictions. It's, you know, odd that we found each other um, because I did not have an addiction issue. But yeah, so she deals mainly with people from addictions. She used to be a alcoholic and deals with people who are alcoholics. And so if I had somebody who was dealing with an alcoholic, I would send, you know, she would be so great at that. So, but the thing about therapy is, processing right so you go and you talk and 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 it's not about finding a solution necessarily it's about processing what happened and there's value in that there's value in telling your story and processing what happened okay but when I think about you you've probably read or researched the stages of grief, right? So you go through anger, denial, and then anger, and then sadness. You know, you go through those processes within the stages of grief. But there are also stages of healing. And what I see so often is people getting stuck in like the lower levels of healing, which is telling their story. Now, if you've been in a toxic relationship, and you held secrets for a long time, and you said, oh no, it's fine. Oh, he's not usually that bad. Oh, it's not that bad. Or even if you had a situation where you had a toxic parent, and they were ugly to you, and you hid from them, and oh, it's not that bad, okay? There's incredible value in telling your story, and owning your truth, and saying, this is what happened to me. Oh, and this is what happened to me. This is what happened to me, okay? There is incredible value in that, okay? But it's kind of like level one, okay? And with even within support groups, even though I love, I love you guys, I love my Facebook group, you know, saying, gosh, he was awful. Yeah, my guy was awful too. This was awful. Yeah, this was awful too. And you feel a connection. You feel better, right? Okay, and that's okay. That's good. That's, but it's kind of like telling your story and then finding others with your story. It's kind of like this like level one. Okay, because at that point, your story is still about him. Your story is still about your toxic person. So when you're going to therapy every week and you're rehashing, oh, can you believe he did this? He's such a jerk. I remember this one time 20 years ago. I totally forgot that he said this about this. That's still about him, right? So that's like level one healing. Okay, and then you might join a support group or find other people who've been in the same situation, and it feels good to have somebody who understands. It feels really good to have someone who understands after living in that toxicity for so long and living in secrets. That's important, but it's still level one because it's still about him, right? So you have telling your story, and it's, it's really his story. And then you have like 
finding other people with your story that's really his story because it's still about the toxic relationship, right? And still about your pain during that. The top of the pyramid is finding your own story. The top of the pyramid is you being the main character in your story. You're not finding other people um, or getting some, you know, just putting a Band-Aid on something because, oh, he was bad and your guy was bad and, oh, that sucked, okay? Your story, the healing comes when your story isn't about him anymore. Your healing comes when everything you do and everything you're interested in and everything your mind is evolving isn't about him, okay? Because it's awesome to have support groups. It's great. It's awesome to have information on toxic people and narcissism and, you know, healing and self-care. It's, that's, that's a part of the process. But it's not the end of the process. Okay? So think about the stages of healing as a, like a pyramid, okay? So if you're down here, to, like you're just now telling your story, that's awesome. That's, that's a part of the process. And then you're finding other people with your story and connecting and saying, oh, yeah, that resonates with me. That's a part of the process. And it's an important part of the process. It's not the end, okay? It's nowhere close to the end. Because until your life is about you, until your life is about your strengths, when you tell your story, it's not, gosh, can you believe what happened to me? Yeah, can you believe he did this? Can you believe, even, can you believe I survived that? Right? Because we can kind of get stuck in that, like, I don't want to say victim, but it kind of is. And like, you know, mama bear, all the love sending out. But it's still about him. When it's about, gosh, I was so strong that I survived that. Survived him. That's totally different than I am so strong that I created this. I'm so strong that I moved into this life. I'm so strong that I moved into my strength. I'm so strong that I found my heart. I'm so strong that I found passion. I'm so strong that I was brave enough to show up to find someone who would love me. That's not about him. That's the top of the pyramid. That's where you finally know you're healed. Because there's a lot of things you can do at the bottom of the pyramid to feel better. And you need it. You need it. It's a process, right? You need it. You can't start with, you know, just take a magic pill and all of a sudden, like, you have this amazing life and you have all this confidence. You feel really good about yourself, right? It's a process. But my vow to you is to help get you through the process, right? At whatever stages. Some of you work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Some of you are in the program. Some, you know, there's all of you in different stages of that. But my promise to you is to be honest, right? We want to get real about our present and get serious about our future. And to get real about your present and serious about your future, you have to know, right? Because telling your story and finding other people with the same story feels so much better than living in the hell, isolated of a toxic relationship, that sometimes you think that's where it ends. Because you don't know. It's like in The Wizard of Oz, which is my favorite movie, by the way. And you've been in the tornado. And the tornado is absolute hell, right? It's scary. You keep spinning around. Things are flying around. You don't know where you're going to land. And then you, like, land. And it's like, oh, my gosh. It's not a hurricane. It's not a tornado anymore. It's a twister. It's a twister. It's not a twister anymore. It's not hell anymore. Nothing's flying at me anymore. No insults are flying at me anymore. But stopping at the bottom where you land is not the end. To get to real healing, to get to the top of the pyramid, you have to figure out a way to open that door, and all of a sudden you're in color, right? All of a sudden life has possibilities. All of a sudden you have hope. That is real healing. That is where you want to go. Because it's not about him anymore. You walked out the door. You shut it, and it wasn't about him. I hope you learn to live a life that is not about him. That's where the magic is. It is possible, okay? If you have any questions, you can PM me with, I'll be happy to give you some extra information, but just hold on to that and know where you are on the pyramid, okay? 
Love you big. I have going out with some girlfriends tonight. So I'm going to eat pasta and I wore like a baggy dress. So I can eat like a lot of pasta because I said I was super hungry. And so I said, girls, y'all are going to be embarrassed watching me eat tonight because I'm going to like throw down with the uh, pasta. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I hope you are um, doing amazing things and living an amazing life. And if you're not, figure out a way to get life. Let me help you get that life. Let me figure it out figure it out there's there are resources there are people don't be stuck in the bottom of the pyramid don't be stuck researching him don't be stuck being obsessed with him okay there's a way out close the door see all the color Mwah! talk to you later girls